What's the worst thing a guy can do? I guess be nice. Be nice. Because sometimes if you're too nice, it gives like, oh, it's like the ick. Really? You know? Because it's like, mm, why are you so nice? You like when guys like degrade you type shit? Is that what you like? Not degrade me, but like, you know. Because I feel like if a guy is nice, that means he gets no girls. And that's like a turn off, you know what I mean? Pourquoi les gentils finissent-ils toujours en dernier C'est ce que l'on va voir dans cette vidéo. Premièrement, bah, d'une manière générale dans la société et euh, ensuite euh, avec les femmes. Donc avant de commencer, je te rappelle que tu as mon outil de coach, je te montre comment j'ai fait 20 000 euros en une semaine. En gros, c'est une formation, je te montre comment créer ton business en ligne avec l'intelligence artificielle. Euh, avant de créer l'arnaque, regarde quand même, hein, j'ai aidé des personnes à gagner de l'argent en ligne. J'ai aidé des personnes à être indépendantes financièrement. Tu as tous les témoignages euh, sur la chaîne, tu peux les contacter si jamais tu doutes. Ok euh, Donc, à bon, un moment donné, les gars, si tu fais rien, il va rien se passer. If you ask a disagreeable person what, what he wants, say, or she wants, they'll tell you right away. They, they know. It's like, this is what I want, and this is how I'm going to get it. But agreeable people, especially if they're really agreeable, are so agreeable that they often don't even know what they want. Because they're so accustomed to living for other people, and to finding out what other people want, and to trying to make them comfortable, and so forth, that it's harder for them to find a sense of their own desires as they move through life. And that's not... Look, there's situations where that's advantageous, but it's certainly not advantageous if you're going to try to uh, forge yourself a career. That just doesn't work at all. And so, even though on average men and women don't, this don't, aren't that much different in terms of their levels of agreeableness by the group, if you go out and you look at the extremes, they're very different. So all of the most agreeable people are women, and all of the most disagreeable people are men. And the thing is, the extremes are often what matter, rather than what's in the middle. And so one of the ways that's reflected in, in society, by the way, is there's way more men in prison. And the best personality predictor of being imprisoned is to be low in agreeableness. It makes you callous. Now you might think, well, what's the opposite of compassion and politeness? And the answer to that is, I think it's best sort of conceptualized as a, as a trading game. So let's say that we're going to play repeated trading games. And if you're very agreeable, then you're going to bargain harder on my behalf than you're going to bargain on your own behalf. Whereas if you're very disagreeable, you're going to do the reverse. You're going to think, I'm in this trading game for me, and you are going to take care of your own interests. Where an agreeable person is going to say, no, no, at best, this is, at, at worst, this has to be 50-50, but I'd like to help you every way I can. One of the things you have to be careful of if you're agreeable is not to be exploited, because you'll line up to be exploited. And I think the reason for that is because you're wired to be exploited by infants. And so, that just doesn't work so well in that actual world. And one of the things, one of the things that happens very often in psychotherapy, you know, people come to psychotherapy for multiple reasons, but one of them is they often come because they're too agreeable. And so what they get is so-called assertiveness training, although it's not exactly assertiveness that's being trained. What it is is the ability to learn how to negotiate on your own behalf. And one of the things I tell agreeable people, especially if they're conscientious, is say what you think. Tell the truth about what you think. There's going to be things you think that you think are nasty and harsh. And they probably are nasty and harsh. But they're also probably true. And you need to bring those up to the forefront and deliver the message. And it's not straightforward at all because agreeable people do not like conflict. Not at all. They smooth the water. You know, and you can see, you can see why that is in accordance with the hypothesis that I've been putting forward. You don't want conflict around infants. It's too damn dangerous. You don't want fights to break out. You don't want anything to disturb the, the relative peace. You know, and if you're also more prone to being hurt physically, and perhaps emotionally, you're also maybe loath to engage in the kind of high intensity conflict that will solve problems in the short term. Because a lot of conflict, it takes a lot of conflict to solve problems in the short term. And, you know, if that can spiral up to where it's dangerous, which it can, if it gets uncontrolled, it might be safer in the short term to keep the waters smooth and to not delve into those situations where conflict emerges. The problem with that is it's not a very good medium to long-term strategy, right? Because lots, lots of times there are things you have to talk about because they're not going to go away. And the advantage to having a well-socialized, disagreeable person is that they really don't let much get in their way. So if you can get a kid who's disagreeable, socialized, that person can be quite, quite the creature, you know, because they're very, they're very forward-moving in their nature and very difficult to stop. But if you don't get them successfully domesticated, tamed, roughly speaking, by the time they're four, their peers reject them. And that's a big problem, because 
Your job as a parent is to make your child socially desirable by the age of four. Like you gotta, you, you, you wanna burn that into your brain because people don't know that. That's your job. And here's, here's why, you, you it's, it's easy if you think about it carefully. So you imagine, you've got, a, you've got a three year old child, so sort of halfway through that initial period of socialization, and you take that child out in public. Okay, what do you want for the child? Who cares about you? What do you want from the for the child? You want the child to be able to interact with other children and adults so that the children are welcoming and smile and want to play with him or her and so the adults are happy to see the child and treat him or her properly. And if your child's a horrible little monster because you're afraid of disciplining them or you don't know how to do that properly, then what they're going to do is they're going to experience nothing but rejection from other children and false smiles from other parents and adults. And that's, so then you're throwing the child out there into a world where every single face that they see is either hostile or lying. And that's not something that's going to be particularly conducive to the mental health or the well-being of your child. If your child can learn a couple simple rules of behavior, like don't interrupt adults when they're talking too much and pay attention and try not to hit the other kids over the head with the truck any more than is absolutely necessary, then, and, you know, and share and play properly, then when they meet other kids, the, the kids are going to try out a few little play routines on them and that's going to go well and then they're going to go off and socialize each other for the rest of their lives. Because that's what happens, is that from four years old onwards, the primary socialization with children takes place among other children. And so if the kids don't get in on that early, they don't move into that developmental spiral upwards and they're left behind. And you can imagine how terrible that is, because a four-year-old will not play with another four-year-old who's two. But a five-year-old certainly will not play with a five-year-old who's two, right? Because the gap is just starting to get unbelievably large. And so the kids start out behind, and then the peers leave them behind, and then those kids are alienated and outside the peer group for the rest of their life. Well, those are the ones that grow up to be long-term antisocial, right? They're already aggressive. It doesn't dip down. Now what happens to normal boys, roughly speaking, imagine the aggressive two-year-old types, they get socialized, so their level of aggression goes down, and then they hit puberty and testosterone kicks in and bang, levels of aggression go back up. And so that's why males are criminals between the ages roughly of 16 and about 25. So, and it matches the creativity curve, by the way, it's so cool. If you look at the spike of creativity among men, 16 to 25, and it starts to go down, criminality matches that absolutely perfectly. So that's quite cool. So, and part of, so the testosterone levels raise, raise the average level of aggression among men. It's more dominance than aggression actually, and testosterone is by no means all bad. And then it starts to decrease at about age 25 or 26, which is usually when men stop staying up late at night, stop drinking as much, develop a full-time career, and take on the burdens and responsibilities and opportunities that are associated with a long-term partner and family. And so, well, so that's, that's the development of, of, of what, I, what I would call predatory aggression. Because I also think that the, the agreeableness distribution is probably something like predatory aggression versus maternal sympathy. It's something like that. So if you look at other, if you look at other mammals that are, that are predators, because we're predators as well as prey animals, if you look at other animals like bears, the male bear has absolutely nothing to do with the raising of the infants. In fact, the female bears will keep the male the hell away because he's likely to kill the infants and maybe even to eat them. So there's no maternality at all in solitary male mammalian predators. It's really useful to investigate the viewpoints of people who have opposing views to yours. Because they'll tell you things, not only will they tell you things you don't know, they'll also tell you how to see the world in ways that you don't see it. And they'll also have skills that you don't have, that you could develop. So for example, if you're an introverted person, it's very useful to watch an extroverted person because the extroverted person has ways of being in the social world that aren't natural to you, that you can use as to improve your toolkit. And if you're disagreeable, one of the best things to do with disagreeable people, especially if that's alienating them from other people, for example, because it can, you know, people treat you like you're a selfish, arrogant son of a, maybe that's because you are. It's like, okay, so what do you do about that? One of the, one of the most uh, promising treatments, let's say, for that is get the person to do something for someone else once a day, just as a practice, and learn how to do it. Maybe you can wake the circuit up, you know, if you think that it's lying dormant in you, which is probably right. 
you know, I think we have a very wide range of propensities within us. Some are switched on. Genetic propensity. Some are switched on. But I think that if you put yourself in the right situation or walk yourself through the right exercises, you can switch some of these other things on as well. But it takes work and, and, and dedication and discipline. I would say, generally speaking, if you want to adapt yourself properly to life, you should find a niche in the environment that corresponds with your temperament. Right? You shouldn't work at cross purposes to your temperament because it's just too damn difficult. But having done that, then you should work on developing the, the skills and, and viewpoints that exist in the space opposite to your personality. Because that's where you're fundamentally underdeveloped. And that way I think you can extend out your temperamental capability across a wider range. And to me that's roughly equivalent as bringing a richer toolkit to each situation. You know, so if you're hyper extroverted, you should probably learn to shut up at parties now and then. And listen, just to see what's going on, to see if you can manage it, you know. And if you're introverted, well then you should learn how to speak in public. And to, and to learn how to go to parties without hiding in the corner and saying nothing to anyone. You know, and if you're agreeable, then you need to learn how to be disagreeable so people can't push you around. And if you're disagreeable, you, learn, you need to learn how to be agreeable so that you're not an evil son of a bitch. So, and the same thing applies even in the conscientious domain. It's like if you're too conscientious, you need to learn to relax and let go a little bit. And if you're unconscientious, it's time like, get out the Google Calendar, man, and start scheduling your day, right? And beat yourself on the back of the head with a stick until you're disciplined enough so that you can actually stick to something for some length of time and not living in absolute squalor, which is something that would characterize someone who's very disorderly, for example, because they just... They don't notice. It doesn't bother them. Disorder. It's like, it, maybe they can see it, but it doesn't have any emotional valence, and so it doesn't have any motivational significance. You know, so, the other thing you might want to think about too, if you're choosing a partner, is try not to choose someone who's too distant from you on the temperamental variables, because you're going to have a hard time bridging the gap. You know, it's hard for an introverted person and an extroverted person to coexist. And it's really hard for an orderly person and a disorderly person to coexist because they will drive each other nuts. Why don't you pick up? Why are you so obsessed by it? That's the basic argument, you know. So, so it's useful to know about your temperament so that you can negotiate the space with your partner as well. And I don't think you should try to find someone who's exactly the same as you because then you don't have the benefits of the alternative viewpoint. But you've got to watch it, because you may hit irreconcilable differences of various sorts. And I've seen that most particularly among couples who are high and low in openness. That's a rough one. And also high and low in conscientiousness. That's another rough one, because they just cannot see how the other person sees the world at all. Moi, de ce que j'observe, quand tu es trop gentil, les gens me se disent, oh, wow, super, il est gentil, j'aime bien. Non. Et se disent, lui, je vais le victimiser. Normal Les gens, ils voient la gentillesse comme une faiblesse. Je ne te parle pas d'être un gentleman, d'être courtois, d'être juste. Non, je te parle des le gentil que moi j'appelle la bouffonnerie. Tu es tellement gentil qu'on dirait que tu es un bouffon. Tu n'entends jamais quelqu'un dire, ah, oh, il est gentil, j'ai grave du respect pour lui. Tu n'entends jamais ce genre de choses. Après, est-ce que ça ne devrait pas être comme si Est-ce que ça devrait être autrement Honnêtement, on s'en bat les on est d'accord, enfin, hein on est d'accord Gérard, enfin, on s'en bat les reins, enfin, à un moment donné on prend la vie comme elle est et l'essentiel c'est de connaître les règles du jeu et de s'organiser. Et puis quand tu es gentil, tu dis pas réellement ce que tu penses, qui a envie d'être, d'avoir un ami ou de côtoyer quelqu'un, tu sais pas ce qu'il pense réellement, parce que tellement il veut pas de conflit, bah il dit oui je suis d'accord tout le temps, alors qu'en fait il n'est pas d'accord, donc il y a même une force d'hypocrisie. Donc tu essaies d'être gentil, mais en fait tu un petit peu hypocrite, on ne sait pas ce que tu penses. Enfin, pff, ça ne marche pas. Je ne vois pas l'efficience d'être de, 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 de gentil. Enfin, le gentil dont on parle. Tu dégages aucune personnalité, donc du coup tu dégages aucun charisme. Les gars ils sont tellement gentils qu'ils ne savent même pas ce qu'ils veulent dans la vie. Et là tu te dis, ouais, ben, au moins ça c'est en société, ok, parce que euh, le monde est méchant. Mais si je suis avec ma femme, longue relation, si je suis gentil, c'est bien. Normalement, je suis à l'abri. I had this friend some years back. She was my best friend in the whole wide world. We mm. hung out constantly. I enjoyed her company. Highly intelligent woman. Um, quite attractive. Married. Husband is very attractive. Very successful. Not only did he provide for his family, she didn't work. Care of the kids. He was emotionally open and available 
every time I'd come over and hang out with both of them, you know, he was so talkative and emotive and empathetic. I, I thought, wow, they're the perfect couple in my opinion. Mm. Um, two beautiful teenage children, perfect life. Right. And he would be in the house cleaning. I mean, Ajax and Pine Sol and Windex and mm -hmm. Wops out. And he would ask me, you know, Demi, how does everything look? Do you, do you think she'll be happy? Um, is this up to a woman's standards? And I would say, wow, you know, you're, you're really incredible. Um, of course she's gonna be happy. You know, you did an amazing job. You always do an amazing job. The relationship with my friend something started changing in her you know she started talking to me about depression and she's overweight mm. and and she didn't like it and it never bothered her husband i mean he adored her no matter what but she started complaining about her weight and this depression and saying that she needs to go to therapy which she did. She found a therapist and started going. But after she started going to therapy, I noticed there was a, a dramatic change in her. Mm. Um, she started complaining after these sessions, she would begin complaining more and more about her husband mm. and how he's making her miserable. And, and I would say to her, what do you mean? This is all of a sudden new for you since you started seeing this new therapist. Right. So I started inquiring about the therapist. You know, what are her beliefs? Um, and she said, oh, she's very feminine. And then within a couple of months, you know, my friend began spiraling. Um, things got weirder and weirder for her. She was complaining more and more about her husband. Um, how he's making her miserable, how he's keeping her fat, how he is to blame for her depression. Wow. And, and no matter what I would say to her, I would always like reach some kind of dead end. She would come at me with something else. And then she started talking about divorce, that she'll be happy and her depression will lift and she'll finally be able to lose the weight once she gets rid of her husband. And mm. I was trying so hard to talk to this woman and she would get angry with me. And I said to her one day, I don't want to say her name, but I said, hey, you know, what is it that he does that is so bad? Please right. just put it into words for me. Tell me, what does he do that is so bad? And she couldn't think of anything. And she sat there for a couple of minutes pondering. And then she came up with, he leaves apple cores on the nightstand. That was all she had. Apple cores on the nightstand because he would eat an apple before falling asleep. Donc voilà, concrètement lui, il a perdu sa femme parce qu'il était trop gentil. Tu te rends compte elle, La seule chose qu'elle a trouvé, c'était euh, les noyaux sur la table de nuit. Tellement genre euh, et elle a rien, rien trouvé. Il y a même des femmes qui font des vidéos là sur les réseaux où elles disent oui, euh, euh, il faut pas avoir peur. Faut pas avoir peur de quitter les gars bien. <rire> bah attends. Alors après, là, les gars, dans la... forcément, dans la section commentaire, les gars vont s'énerver. Ils vont dire ouais, c'est n'importe quoi. Les meufs elles réfléchissent pas. De toute façon, on va finir toutes seules. Elles vont finir dans la street, la street éternelle. Elles vont rester, elles vont errer comme ça. Là, voilà, ça leur apprendra, etc. Certes, c'est pas une bonne stratégie. On est d'accord pour elles, mais ça change pas quand même le résultat. Tellement elles aiment pas les gars bien. Je pourrais même associer Jean, gars bien, gentil là, à Simp. Tellement elles n'aiment pas les Simp, elles préfèrent être seules. C'est ça qu'il faut, qu faut, qu faut retenir. Elles préfèrent être seules que rester avec un gars comme ça. Et ça, c'est revenir à la base. La nature féminine, c'est pour ça qu'il faut connaître la nature féminine. D'ailleurs, tu as Zeus en description. Pour le prix, c'est cadeau. Une femme, elle a besoin d'être stimulée émotionnellement dans une relation. Les femmes sont émotionnelles. Et quand tu es gentil, tu es ennuyeux. Et si tu es ennuyeux, ça c'est la pire des choses que tu peux la pire des choses le, le, le pire que tu peux faire c'est être ennuyeux avec une femme là tu es sûr de ça va pas durer longtemps mais imagine quand même le gars euh, comme il doit devenir fou donc là il a divorcé parce que les noyaux donc c'est où il pète les peaux il dit ouais non mais t'inquiète tu... les noyaux c'est bon j'arrête ça changera rien en fait à vouloir trop en faire pour qu'elle soit heureuse demain, tu finis comme ça alors ça veut pas dire que tu dois pas la rendre heureuse mais c'est juste que tu n'agit pas de la bonne manière pour la rendre réellement heureuse. C'est le problème que, que rencontre Will Smith. 
What's up, my guys? Most girls won't admit this, but for your sake, I will. I hate nice guys, so let me help you out. Here are three nice guy traits to avoid. Stop sending exclamation points and emojis. Who am I texting? My best girlfriend? You're texting like this because you think it'll make you more relatable. I want a man. You can make me feel comfortable without giving me feminine vibes. Stop putting my needs before yours. Why do you think Chad is getting my attention? Do you think it's because I get what I want every single time I ask him for it? Do you think it's because every time I get upset, he apologizes or buys me something to make me feel better? Do you think it's because he stays home from the gym for his boys night when I tell him I don't want him to leave? No, compliments. Without meaning that is. Calling a girl beautiful only goes so far. We know when you're saying it, it's just because you think you have to. You make it lose its meaning. Whether it's your opening line on Hinge or a text you sent me after after meeting. This one does you no favor, Steve. It's just a slimy way to put me in a position where I can't respond negatively without being called an ungrateful bitch. The hardest thing a guy can do? Um, I'm not really into nice guys because I look f boys, so Period. I can't really think of anything nice that they can do. My lucky day, hell yeah. I'm just joking. All right, and what's the worst thing a guy can do? I guess be nice. Be nice. Because sometimes if you're too nice, it gives like, ugh, it's like the ick. Really? You know? Cause it's like, mm, why are you so nice? Do you like when guys like degrade you type sh Is that what you like? Not degrade me, but like, you know. Cause I feel like if a guy is nice, that means he gets no girls. And that's like a turn off, you know what I mean? Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. But then I'm on social media, like I want a guy that gets no bitches, but like that's just not true, so. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Moi, je pense que là, c'est clair. Uh, on a compris, être gentil, ça ne fonctionne pas. Ma d'expérience, quand t'es gentil, bah t'as pas la force de tes opinions. Donc forcément, pour une femme, uh, bah... Si t'as pas la force de ton opinion, ça veut dire que t'es pas un leader. Et les femmes aiment les leaders. Les femmes veulent le best. Surtout de nos jours maintenant. Et maintenant, elles veulent le 20, 10%, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1%. Et ne leur dis pas que c'est pas possible. Parce que l'univers va leur envoyer. Et comme elle a si bien dit, parce que j'ai vu le, la deuxième vidéo qu'on qu veut juste de regarder, dans, le, dans la section commentaires, les gars disent Ah, elle a pas de cerveau, etc. Tu peux dire tout ce que tu veux. C'est comme ça que la femme, elle pense. Alors, je peux comprendre que ça fait pas plaisir. Donc tu te dis mais pourquoi le gars il est gentil mais euh, il... c'est donc lui il est gentil mais c'est lui qui perd comment c'est possible mais dans tout ce qu'elle a dit euh, je vois pas un truc qui est faux ce que tu vas projeter quand t'es trop gentil c'est que tu veux juste lui plaire tu veux être sûr de lui plaire donc tu vas tout faire tu vas dire oui à tout et, et si jamais tu fais tout ça c'est parce que t'as pas l'habitude d'être avec une femme quand même ça veut dire que t'as pas l'habitude de gérer t'as pas l'habitude d'être euh, tu n'es pas dans un mindset d'abondance ça c'est clair parce que quand tu es dans un mindset d'abondance, que tu sais que tu peux avoir plusieurs femmes, eh ben tu ne vas pas euh, euh, baisser tes standards. C'est-à-dire tu ne vas pas dire oui à tout. Euh, être sûr que euh, le restaurant qu'on va choisir, c'est le restaurant qu'elle veut, mais pas le tien. Pas celui que toi, tu voudrais vraiment avoir. Alors qu'en vérité, si tu choisis son restaurant, même si jamais elle n'a pas envie d'aller dans ce restaurant-là, tu dis moi j'ai envie d'aller dans celui-là, on va dans celui-là. Après, quand, on va aller, quand tu vas aller au restaurant avec elle, elle va commencer à manger et dire hey, c'est bon. Hein? Ah ben ouais. Et là, elle va dire hey, je t'avais dit. Même le choix du plat, c'est déjà arrivé, euh, je, parce que moi je choisis toujours bien les bons plats. Je choisis toujours les bons plats moi, je prends un boum euh, En général, je, je sais pas, j'étais une femme, euh, elle choisit son, son plat, après elle goûte le mien. Ah mais c'est super bon euh, ton, ce que t'as commandé C'est vrai que toi ça a l'air éclaté. <rire> Chacun ses choix, t'as voulu faire, euh, non mais t'aurais dû me dire, etc. Donc maintenant, il maintenant, faut même que je choisisse maintenant. Donc voilà, là c'est une boutade, mais... Euh, une boutade un peu de la vérité. Hein. Donc tous les gars qui font tout pour pouvoir faire comme elle, elle la voudrait, des fois, elles savent même pas ce qu'elles veulent. Naturellement, elle a envie de, 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 de suivre ton lead. Naturellement. On va dans ce restaurant-là. Au début, elle n'aimait pas. Ah, mais en fait, c'est super bon. Elle, elle aime maintenant. C'est comme ça que ça fonctionne. C'est pas genre, toi, tu vas dans son, le restaurant qu'elle a choisi et que tu fais, ah, c'est super bon. C'est comme si, non, c'est pas comme ça. Et puis surtout, les femmes veulent des, des hommes qui ont, qui ont du succès. Si jamais t'es super gentil, c'est que t'as pas de succès avec les femmes. On parle du gentil qui est, t'es un bouffon, quoi. Enfin, t'as pas, pas la force des opinions, tu dis oui à tout, tu fais tout pour essayer de lui plaire. Comme l'autre, elle a dit, oh, c'est suspect. Ça, ça veut dire, toi, t'as pas l'habitude d'être avec des, des meufs bien. Donc, il y a des gars qui vont dire, non, n'importe quoi, tu peux être gentil et être dans l'abondance. Bah, ben, non, en fait. Tu vas pas tout accepter, c'est de l'abondance. Dès qu'il y a un truc qui va pas aller, tu vas lui peut-être lui dire une fois, et si jamais ça fonctionne pas, tu vas changer. Parce que, parce que tu es dans un maintien d'abondance. Regarde dans la description si tu vas aller plus loin par rapport à ça. Autre point pourquoi ça repousse les femmes, euh, les gars gentils, c'est que c'est pas du tout un trait aphrodisiaque. Je dirais même que c'est le contraire. C'est pour ça que tous les gars sont dans la friend zone. Les gars gentils, aimables, euh, intelligents, friend zone. Parce que ce ne sont pas les traits que recherchent en priorité les femmes. Ça veut pas dire qu'elles aiment pas ça, qu'elles aiment pas ces traits-là. 
Mais ça veut dire que ce ne sont pas les traits qu'elle recherche en priorité. Et le gentil, il représente tout ça là. Gentil, aimable, loyal, euh, fidèle, etc. Et j'irai même plus loin. Ouais, ouais, ouais. ouais. J'irai même plus loin. Être le gentil dont on parle, c'est le, le, le contraire de la masculinité. Et je peux te dire, essaie d'exciter une femme sans masculinité. Je veux dire, l'étape d'après, c'est juste tu mets des talons, quoi. Après, euh, voilà, hein. talons, rouges, perruques, bon. Donc, finalement, quand t'es gentil comme ça, euh, que tu fréquentes euh, des femmes, tu vis dans un monde où il y a des règles, hein, les, les fameuses règles de euh, « moi, je fais pas ci, moi, je fais pas ça euh, », euh, tu peux rajouter à la fin euh, « avec toi ». Quand elle tombe sur l'alpha ou le leader euh, qu'elle recherche, il n'y a, a pas de règles. Les règles, c'est juste pour toi, spécialement, oh, tu, voilà, c'est pour toi. Toutes les règles qu'elle qu dit sur les réseaux sociaux, c'est pour le bouffon, là, le gentil. Là, gentil. Moi, je vais pas ci, pas ça, ça c'est pour toi. Donc la prochaine fois que tu entendras une femme qui dit ouais, moi je vais pas ci, moi je vais pas ça, euh, c'est une règle, c'est adapté pour toi. Donc moralité, euh, quand t'es gentil, personne te respecte dans la société, t'es pas respecté des hommes et tu finis dans la fin zone. Donc je vois rien, je vois pas les gars euh, être trop gentil. Je sais qu'on a toujours tendance à vouloir être gentil. Enfin, ça veut pas dire que tu dois pas être euh, gentil. On s'entend, hein. gentleman, euh, cordial. Ça, c'est normal, ça. Mais le, le gentil, de genre, euh, t'as peur de, te, de dire ce que tu penses réellement, euh, tu veux dire, tu veux pas de conflit, ou tu veux dire, euh, être gentil pour que les gens t'aiment. Donc, dis-moi ce que tu en penses euh, euh, en commentaire. Et les gars, on lâche rien et on reste déterminé. Il y a eux et à nous. Je vais être encore. Ce nouveau outil vidéo avec intelligence artificielle donne vie à toutes mes idées en quelques secondes. Laissez-moi vous montrer. On va dire que je suis un vrai amateur de bonne cuisine. Alors je vais créer une vidéo sur les bons plats délicieux. Tout d'abord, je vais sur Apollon Vidéo. Et là, je vais écrire quelque chose comme comment faire des bons plats français. Je vais choisir la voix, le format, si c'est sur YouTube, sur Instagram. Je clique et littéralement en quelques secondes, regardez ça. Une belle vidéo prête à être diffusée. Ça m'a pris quelques minutes. Et ce que j'aime beaucoup, c'est si jamais je veux personnaliser et faire des changements, je peux le faire. Par exemple, si jamais je veux modifier la première phrase, je clique sur éditer, je modifie la phrase. Si je veux changer aussi la vidéo d'introduction, je peux aussi le faire. Je peux changer d'ailleurs toutes les vidéos. Je vais sur éditer. Ensuite, je choisis la vidéo que je veux changer. Je cherche dans la bibliothèque une autre vidéo. Je la remplace. Appliquer les changements. Et regardez ça, une vidéo magnifique avec tous les changements pris en compte, ce site fait gagner énormément de temps. Et comme vous pouvez le constater, il propose des vidéos incroyables qui sont prêtes à être publiées sur n'importe quel réseau social. Allez, jetez un oeil et profitez de 7 jours gratuits pour pouvoir tester l'application.